So the shorthand description for what I do is I'm a professor at Columbia Business School, have been for a long time. But in other parts of my life, I advise companies, I write books and articles, I do research, and I work with organizations to try to help them really simplify and demystify this whole area of strategy, innovation, and digital transformation. That's what's kept me pretty busy for the last few years. Well, um, I was born in New Haven to uh, two scientists. Uh, so my mother was a microbiologist and my dad uh, is an organic chemist. And uh, the two of them came over from Germany, uh, which was pretty much in a shambles after the Second World War, and built a life at the Yale Medical Center. Uh, where they were both doing research in, in the labs there. And so I'm really a third generation working woman. My grandmother was a teacher in, uh, in Germany as my mother was growing up. Uh, so then my dad did the heretical thing of taking a job with Xerox and moved the family to Rochester, New York. And Xerox at the time was a super exciting place, so this would have been in the late 60s. And uh, Xerox was experimenting with Xerox Park, computer mice, digitization, you know, a lot of these really future-forward uh, concepts. And my family was kind of interesting in that being scientists, you know, they're just really curious people, very open to understanding more about the world. And so our dinner table conversations would always be peppered with, oh, you know, did you hear about this or did this new thing happening uh, kind of um, intrigue you? They talked about business a lot. I was reflecting on that. I, I don't think I realized it at the time, but they were, you know, fascinated by how decisions get made in business and why people do the things that they do and so a lot of our family conversation was really about organizations and why they why they do uh, what they do so uh, as an example uh, eventually my dad went from Xerox to Kodak and as we all know Kodak uh, has a long and fabled history in the chemical based film business and so his first day on the job he goes and sits across the desk from a guy named Thomas Whiteley and Thomas Whiteley is the head of the emulsion research laboratory at Kodak now this is this is the place where all the chemicals happen right so you stick this guy in the arm and he bleeds silver halide I mean lifer in Kodak and he says to my dad now remember my dad had been at Xerox so he'd seen all this future oriented stuff happening and he says so Wolfgang you know what do you think about the future and my dad looks at him and he says oh well it's clear to me it's all going digital, it's eight millimeter, eight millimeter film has had it, uh, you know, just lays out this very clear vision of what the future was going to hold. And Whiteley kind of looks at him and says, thank you very much for your opinion, please go back to the research labs where you can do minimal damage, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was that kind of conversation. Um, now, the reason I think that's so interesting is this happened in 1980. Had that warning, had that early warning been listened to at all by the people at Kodak, they had a decade or more before the digital camera would actually make their business you know, obsolete. Um, in that time and with the cash flow they had, they could have completely transformed that place. I mean, if you think about it, Kodak owned imaging. Kodak invented the digital camera. Uh, Kodak could have been Apple. Kodak could have been Sony. You know, Kodak could have done any number of things. And yet, you know, there they were in Rochester, throwing up the barricades and pretending the future wasn't really um, happening. So I'd say even in my family, it was a lot of curiosity you know, back in the days before you had handy dandy search engines in a super computer in your pocket, uh, we had reference books and they would be consulted regularly <laughs> as I was growing up. My setting encouraged a lot of curiosity and try to figure things out.